And it's time for business now. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wale Edu, says after China and India, Nigeria is the largest economy that investors are running after. Mr. Edu said that he's in Marrakech, Morocco, on the sidelines of the ongoing 2023 World Bank International Fund annual meetings. The minister, however, advised that the country had to be ready to attract such investment and to turn initial interest into investment in agriculture, solid minerals, industry, manufacturing, and import substitution. According to him, these are the areas spurring investors' interest in coming to Nigeria. He said the wish of the country is to grow her economy, reduce poverty, and make life better for all Nigerians, which is the determination of President Bola Tinubu and members of his administration. He noted that the reaction so far had been positive and that Nigeria had been appointed to chair the Africa Governors Forum of the World Bank. And in the meantime, the International Monetary Fund says the country's exchange rate unification and subsidy removal will pave the way for economic, economic growth and inclusiveness. The fund speaking at each World Economic Outlook presentation at the IMF World Bank annual meeting in Marrakech, Morocco, says the president's reform decision was proactive and much needed. Lara Folanyo reports. The World Economic Outlook presentation, it describes global economic activity as still below the pre-pandemic era, particularly for emerging and developing economies like Nigeria, with widening divergences across regions and several forces holding back recoveries. Growth for emerging markets is projected to decline modestly this year and next. The report also says more than half of low-income countries are at high risk of debt distress. So on, on Sub-Saharan Africa, we have a slight downward revision for the region as a whole. I mean, we're expecting growth at about 3.3% this year, and that's a 0 0.2 percentage point downward revision. Um, there's a slight downward revision also for next year to about 4%. We see African growth 3.34%. That's above the global average, but it's below the potential that um, Africa has. Uh, and that it needs to catch up more quickly towards higher income levels. Uh, the, the shocks hitting growth are, are diverse, but there are several external ones coming from the higher fuel, food and fertilizer prices still um, from the war in Ukraine. Nigeria's removal of fuel subsidy and exchange rate unification are commended as the reforms are described as measures that would boost inclusive growth in the country. Nigeria, in particular, we have um, a growth forecast that goes from 3.3% this year to 2.9% next year, before going up to 3.1% in 2024. There's a downward revision for this year. Uh, partly this is because of the demonetization, the high inflation, the shocks to agriculture and hydrocarbon output. That's coming on top of those external headwinds. I would also add that President uh, Tinubu has moved quickly with important reforms, including ending uh, the fuel subsidies and unifying the official exchange rate. We welcome these initial bold reforms because we see them as paving the way towards stronger and inclusive growth. Central banks are advised to restore price stability and use policy tools to relieve potential financial stress when needed. Effective monetary policy frameworks and communication are also recommended as vital towards anchoring expectations and minimizing the output cost of disinflation. Countries are also advised to put in place reforms that will cut down on structural impediments to growth, aid inflation decline and reduce debts. Lara Polayo, TVC News, Marrakesh. And now, in a recent development, the Central Bank of Nigeria has announced the appointment of three additional banks for the collection of fees under the Nigerian Export Supervision Scheme. According to the APS Bank, the appointed banks are Coronation Merchant Bank Limited, Parallax Bank Limited, and Lotus Bank. The CBN disclosed that the appointment was approved by the Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning. Payment covered by the Nigerian Export Supervision Scheme include payment for crude oil and its derivatives and payment for non-oil goods. The Nigerian Export Supervision Scheme fee is a statutory payment to the federal government 
of Nigeria and on all legitimate goods exported from Nigeria. And the equities market now, Asia stock market rose today, hefted by stimulus hopes in China and strong earnings in South Korea. All at the same time, the U.S. dollar lost some of its values, a dovish shift in tone from the Federal Reserve officials, hard traders sparing U.S. interest rate expectations. MSCI's Brodex Index of Asia Pacific shares of Site Japan rose 1.5%. The head for its best session in two and a half months. South Korea's cost piece was up 2.4%. percent i in its best day since January as cheap and battery earnings impressed. Report on China preparing stimulus to help its economy also supported the mood, especially in Hong Kong, where a broad rally lifted the Hang Seng above 18,000 for the first time in two weeks. U.S. stock futures were steady, and European futures, Harvard, were cut straight left off yesterday. The dollar was broadly flat against major currencies as traders redirect their focus on the release of Federal Reserve minutes later today on a key inflation print tomorrow for hints on future path of interest rate. U.S. Treasury yields continue to slide, pinning the dollar close to two month or two weeks lows as market digest recent comments from policymakers that the Fed may not need to tighten monetary policy further. Investors were also keeping a close eye on the conflict between Israel and Palestinian Islamist group Hamas with some signs of safe haven market moves in recent days. And so some company news now, Samsung Electronics earlier today said it preliminarily thought quarter profit dropped by a smaller than expected 78% as the battered money or memory chip market shows early signs of recovering from a severe downturn. Samsung shares opened 3.3% higher versus a 1.4% rise in the wider market, as analysts said memory chip prices likely bottomed in their fourth quarter, with some time starting to rebound. The world's largest memory chip and smartphone maker estimated its operating profit fell to 2.4 trillion Korean won, that's about $1.79 billion in July to September from 10.85 trillion Korean won a year earlier in a short preliminary earnings statement. The profit beat a 2.1 trillion Korean won uh, smart estimate, which is weighted towards forecasts from analysts who are more consistently accurate. ExxonMobil is expected to say on Wednesday it will buy U.S. rival Pioneer Natural Resources for about $60 billion, a deal that puts it atop the largest U.S. Uh, oil field and secures a decade of low cost production, according to a uh, report. Report says Exxon, which was valued at $442 billion on yesterday, is expected to make a pure stock offer valued at more than $250 a share. For Pioneer. Pioneer shares, which is close to around $237.41, yesterday were up 2.7% at $244 in pre market trading. It will be the largest acquisition by any company this year, and Exxon biggest since its $81 billion purchase of mobile oil in 1998. And crude oil prices uh, edge higher today as investors grapple with the prospect of supply disruptions due to the Middle East turmoil. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose today to sell at $86.03 per barrel with a surge of 0.07%. Brent crude features also experience an upward price margin of 0.18% to sell at $87.81 per barrel. Morning Light recorded a downward price review of 0.51% to sell at $90.41 per barrel. For the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers are offering $89.99 per barrel with an uptick of 3.08%.